Little Red Riding Hood. In the forest, there lived a little girl and her mother. Whenever the little girl left the house, she wore the red hooded cape her grandmother had knitted for her. This is why everyone used to call her Little Red Riding Hood. One New Year's Day, in the kitchen, whilst her mother was preparing for the evening, Little Red Riding Hood approached her mother. Mother, I'm so happy. It's the new year. Will grandmother be joining us tonight? Grandma is ill, darling. Don't think she'll make it tonight. I was just making her some New Year's cookies. May I take the cookies to my grandmother? No, my darling. It's too cold. You stay home. I'll go and come back. And I will brew her some herbs so that she gets better as soon as possible. Please, mother, please. You have a lot to do here. I'll go and come back before you know it. Okay, but dress warm, please. The little red riding hood wore her boots and red cape. She grabbed the basket her mother had prepared and left home. Do not leave the forest's path and please be home before dark. Okay, mother. It sure was cold out there. The whole forest was covered in snow. The Little Red Riding Hood was walking in the forest with joy. Deep in the forest lived a young hunter. He was after a wolf that would enter the homes of the villagers and steal their food. I never thought I would be spending New Year's Eve all by myself. But today I will catch you mighty bad wolf. And because of this, everyone will enter the new year much happier. Having put all the villagers in fear, the wolf was out in the forest for his prey. I hate snowy days. Can't find anything to eat. Meanwhile, Little Red Riding Hood was on her way. She noticed a baby gazelle in the woods. Poor gazelle was shivering from the cold. Poor baby gazelle, how cold you look. Little Red Riding Hood wanted to approach the gazelle and help out. But once the gazelle noticed her, it ran away. Hey, stop! Don't run away! I'm not going to hurt you! I only want to help! Little Red Riding Hood followed the gazelle into the forest. Even with its very slim figure, it was so fast. All of a sudden, it disappeared. Little Red Riding Hood continued going after the gazelle for some time, but then thought it was impossible to find it. She had a look around and noticed she was now far from the forest. She was somewhere she had never been before. The snow made it impossible for her to know where she was. She thought by following her footprints, she could find her path. She followed the path, but in time, the snow covered her trace. Right at that moment, Little Red Riding Hood felt helpless and began to cry. <laughs> Somebody heard her all right, but it was no one other than the evil-hearted wolf. Hello! Is there anybody out there? The wolf went towards the voice he heard, and soon after saw Little Red Riding Hood. Without scaring her, he approached her. Seeing the wolf in front of her eyes, she was very scared and began to scream. Help! The wolf is here! Help! Somebody help! Psst! Don't yell! Don't yell! I'm not going to hurt you! I heard you calling out and I came to help! Little Red Riding Hood thought that he meant no harm. So she stopped yelling. Now tell me. What's a girl like you doing in the forest on her own? I was taking cookies to my ill grandmother, but now I'm lost. Oh, 
No human has ever lived here. And where does your ill grandmother live? Um, Little Red Riding Hood did not want to tell him where her grandmother lived because she still had her doubts about the wolf. Um, I can't find Grandmother's house from here. If you take me back to the forest path, I could find it there. Okay. Well, come on, follow me. In the end, the wolf walked and Little Red Riding Hood followed him towards the forest. But the evil wolf had a mighty plan waiting for her. Once we arrive at the forest path, this little girl will show me where her grandmother lives. That way, I can first eat her, then I can go and eat her grandmother. <laughs> now that's what I call a New Year's feast. After a short walk, the wolf and Little Red Riding Hood found the path. Yes, here we are. Now do you remember your grandmother's house? All Little Red Riding Hood wanted to do was to get rid of the wolf at once and hurry up and go to her grandmother. Thank you. I'll take it from here. Anyhow, it's not that far. It's the red house at the end of the forest. Right then, Little Red Riding Hood knew she had made a mistake, but it was now too late. Really? <laughs> The wolf opened his mouth, got closer to Little Red Riding Hood, but right at that moment, hearing a rifle, the wolf ran away in a panic. Little Red Riding Hood was relieved and quickly rushed to her grandmother's house. Meanwhile, the hunter was still after the wolf. He vaguely noticed his footprints on the snow. I know you're here. I'll find you. After an adventurous trip, at last, she made it to her grandmother's house. She knocked on the door, heard her grandmother's voice from inside. The door is open, my darling girl. You can't come in. Hearing her grandmother's voice, Little Red Riding Hood was a little surprised. This voice doesn't sound like grandmother's. It must sound like this because she's ill. Little Red Riding Hood opened the door and entered. All the curtains were closed. In the dark room was her grandmother in her bed with her blanket pulled up to her chest, just laying there. Thank you so much for coming, dear. Well, what did you bring me now? Mother baked amazing cookies. She told me you won't be joining us on New Year's Eve, so I thought I might come and see you. You did well, darling girl. Come closer so I can see you better. Little Red Riding Hood got closer to her grandmother's bed, but she had a bad feeling about this. Closer, my dear, a little closer. Little Red Riding Hood was now one step closer to her grandmother's bed. Her grandmother looked awkwardly different to her. Grandmother, what happened? Why are your ears so big? So that I can hear you better. And why are your eyes so big? So that I can see you better. What about your arms? Why are your arms so big? So that I can hug you better. Hmm, teeth? Why are your teeth so sharp? So that I can eat you better. Suddenly, the wolf jumped out of bed and threw himself onto Little Red Riding Hood. Come back here. You cannot run away from me. Little Red Riding Hood got out of the house and began to run away. But the very fast wolf was about to catch her. Just as he was about to jump over her and grab her, he noticed his foot was stuck. And suddenly he found himself hanging from a tree. 
When Little Red Riding Hood stopped and had a look, she saw that he had been caught in a trap and quickly went over to him. Tell me, you dirty wolf, where is my grandmother and what have you done to her? Tell me! He couldn't do anything, don't worry. Little Red Riding Hood noticed where the voice was coming from and noticed that the hunter was coming after the wolf. Your grandmother is okay, little girl. She is resting in my shack. When I heard your grandmother was ill, in order to protect her, I took her to my shack and I prepared a trap for the wolf. Fortunately, we caught him before he could do any harm to you. Bad wolf! First he broke and entered my grandmother's house. Then he dressed into her clothes and tried to trick me. But I knew there was something strange about this. Come on, let's go to your grandmother. And as for him, he can hang here throughout New Year's Eve. And I'll take care of him tomorrow. And so the hunter and Little Red Riding Hood headed towards the hunter's shack. The wolf yelled after them. Hey, stop! Don't leave me here all by myself! It was almost night time. Little Red Riding Hood, Grandmother and the Hunter arrived at Little Red Riding Hood's house. Her mother was waiting for her in front of their house. When she saw her daughter, she was very happy. My dear child, where have you been? Mother, it's you! Please tell me what happened. I will tell you everything, Mother, but first I must apologize. I didn't listen to you, and I left the path in the forest, and you wouldn't believe what happened. I will never ever disobey you again. Little Red Riding Hood, her mother, grandmother, and the hunter spent the evening together that night, eating, dancing their way into the new year. As for the wolf, this was the worst New Year's evening he had ever had. Once upon a time, in a little cottage in the woods, lived a mother goat and her little goats leading a happy life. The little goats were very cute. They all were like toys. Mother goat, like all mothers, loved her little goats very much. She protected them from all the wild animals in the forest. One day, before she left the house to find food in the forest, she called her little goats next to her and... My dear children, I am going into the forest. Do not open the door for anyone. If the wolf comes into the house, he will eat all of us alive. He's very shifty. He will disguise himself into different shapes and try to fool you. So how will we recognize him? The wolf has a rough voice, and I have a soft and sweet voice. So you can recognize him from his low and rough voice right away. Right when she was leaving, the mother goat remembered something else. She turned to her little goats. Ah, one more thing. The wolf's feet are black, and mine are white. You can also recognize him from his feet. Don't worry, mother. We can protect ourselves. You can count on us. Mother goat kissed her little goats one by one and headed into the woods. The wolf was watching them from afar. When he saw Mother Goat leaving, he waited a while, and then he came in front of the cottage and knocked on the door. Who is it? Little goats, open the door. Your mother is here. I brought nice food for you all. But the little goats recognized the wolf's rough voice right away. Without opening the door, they yelled out. You're not our mother. Her voice is sweet and more beautiful. You're the wolf. You can't fool us. The wolf got very angry because he could not fool the little goats. So he went to the shop bought a big piece of chalk and ate it. Now his voice sounded much softer, so he went back to the cottage and knocked on the door again. This time the wolf started to talk with his soft voice. My little goats, open the door, it's your mother. I brought food from the forest for all of you. Hearing the wolf's soft voice, the little goats thought that it was really their mother this time. Just when they were about to open the door, one of them shouted, Wait, wait! 
Let's look at the feet from underneath the door. Of course, when the little goats looked from underneath the door, they saw the wolf's black feet. So they yelled again without opening the door. We will not open the door for you. Our mother's feet are not black. They are white. You're the wolf. As furious as he was, the wolf left. This time, he went to the bakery. When the baker saw the wolf in front of him, he was very surprised. I'm a vegetarian now, so I will eat pastry from now on. Could you give me some flour? The wolf came out of the bakery with a little sack of flour. When he got near the cottage, he opened the sack and poured all the flour on his feet. Now his feet were all white. The shifty wolf knocked on the door for the third time. My little goats, open the door. It's your mother. I have brought food for all of you from the forest. First, show us your feet so we know it's you, mother. The wolf showed them his feet with flour. When the little goats saw the white feet, they believed that it was their mother and opened the door. And what did they see? The wolf was standing right there in front of them. The little goats did not know what to do. They started to run around yelling. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I will catch all of you. <laughs> one of the little goats went under the desk. The second one into the bed. The third one into the chimney. Fourth kid hid in the kitchen. The fifth one got into the closet. The sixth hid behind the curtain. And the seventh kid went into the giant clock on the wall. But the shifty wolf was quick, and one by one he caught them all from wherever they were hiding. Run! Run! Come here! Don't run! I will catch you all! I said stop! The only one he could not find was the one hiding in the clock. He was already full, so he gave up on looking for them and head out. There was a big yard a little further from the cottage. The wolf lay under a tree on the yard and started to sleep, snoring. Short while after, the mother goat returned home. When she saw the door open, she knew something bad had happened and started to scream. When she entered the house, she was shocked. The tables and chairs were all upside down. Curtains were torn. The beds were all messed up. The pillows and sheets were all on the floor. Mother Goat looked for her little goats but could not find them anywhere. She started to yell out their names one by one, but not one answered. Finally, it was time to call the last one's name. Only then she heard a high-pitched voice. I'm inside the grandpa clock, mommy! Mother Goat ran to the grandpa clock and took her kid out of there. Mother Goat and kid hugged. The little goat started to tell the story, crying. The wolf came in disguise and we thought it was you and opened the door. The wolf ate all my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Goat was very upset. She cried for her little goats. With only one of her kids remaining, she walked out and started to go towards the yard. After a while, they saw the wolf sleeping under a tree. He snored so bad that the branches of the tree were shaking. Mother Goat observed the wolf for a while. She realized that inside his tummy, some things were moving. Oh my God! Can it be that my goats are in his tummy and they're still alive? She had a plan. She turned to her kid. Run home, bring me a needle, thread and the scissors. When the little kid was running home, Mother Goat collected six big rocks from the floor. After a while, the little goat came back with a needle, thread and the big scissors. Mother Goat cut open the wolf with the scissors. 
she saw one of her little goats right away. And then the other ones started to appear one by one. They were all healthy. Mother goat couldn't stay still from the joy she had. All the little goats hugged their mothers with joy. Mama, mama, we love you. They were all full of joy. Ah, my little goats, you're safe. Mother goat put the rocks she collected carefully inside the wolf. Then she stitched his tummy with the needle and thread. The wolf was sleeping so deep he'd not feel anything. He did not move. Mother goat and her little goats quickly got away. When the wolf woke up, he stood up. His tummy hurt really bad. He thought to himself that it was because he ate too many goats. Because his tummy was full of rocks, he got really thirsty. He came next to the river to drink some water. But when he was walking, the rocks were hitting each other. My tummy feels so heavy and full. It's as if all the goats I ate turned into rocks. He wanted to kneel down and drink some water. Due to the rocks being so heavy, he lost his balance and slipped into the water. Oh, help! Help me! I'm drowning! Help! Yelled out for help, but no one helped him. He could not bear the weight of the rocks anymore and went under into deep waters. When they saw what happened, Mother Goat and her little goats ran to the river. The wolf is dead! Yippee! The wolf is dead! The wolf is dead! Yippee! Hand in hand, they all started to dance and jump around. From that day on, Mother Goat and her seven little goats had a peaceful and happy life in their cottage in the forest.